and welcome to the LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Matt Dumont, an LSAT teacher and tutor at the LSAT Demon and a 2L at the University of Maryland. With me today is special guest Michael Hill, a 2L at the George Washington University School of Law. And he's my former TA um, when I was studying for the LSAT. And then we became study buddies when we were uh, continuing to study. So, Michael, how are you? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Matt. Glad to be here. I'm super stoked, man. Um, I feel like yeah. it's been a minute since we've seen each other because we've sort of during COVID pandemic, we spread out uh, across the country. Like I moved to Maryland. You, where did you move to? Because um, you bounced out of Los Angeles uh, um, right at the height of the pandemic, right? Yeah, right as things were going on, um, my now wife, fiance at the time, we moved to her parents' house in Kansas uh, for like six months. And that was like when it was like, that was like the lockdown, lockdown, like don't go to the grocery store wow. um, period. We were there for six months. And then I moved to Birmingham, Alabama with my wife, um, where my parents live. That's where I did my first semester of law school. And then um, early January of 20. 20. Yeah, we moved to um, D.C. Awesome. And so, uh, uh, Michael, you uh, experienced the 1L on Zoom, much like I did, which was, I think, I mean, if there's a year to do it, I think the 1L year is probably the year to do on Zoom. But like, I I don't know. I, I think there's pros and cons. I didn't love some of the aspects. It was nice to be like, hey, I'm in my pajamas. But mm -hmm. how was uh, the Zoom experience for you at uh, GW? I think I'm in the minority of people that loved it. Okay. Um, I, and, and again, like all my friends I talked to, I don't think anybody felt that way. Um, I think everybody understood that, you know, for a while it was necessary, but I think a lot of people really valued in-person learning. Sure. I think that in-person learning is better. Um, I think it's easier to pay attention to what your professors are saying. Um, Less distractions but, from being in your own space with toys and all the fun stuff. Exactly. And you don't, you don't have like a second screen right there with the internet that the professor is going to have no idea if you're not paying attention. Right. Um, and so I think it's not as good, but f for me, you know, I, my philosophy in law school, and, and I think it's just how it is, like, it's not about being good. It's about being better than everybody else. Right. And when you're online, everybody's going to have a harder, a harder time paying attention. So it's, that's where you have that comparative advantage of, can I just pay attention a little bit better than everybody else? <laughs> I think it's easier to do that online um, you're like, it's setting so, the competition behind me because I'm better at doing zoom law school. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's, ex it's exactly my philosophy. And then once you get used to it, I mean, having a, you know, a 30 second commute from your bed to your computer is yeah. unbeatable. I will say I miss I miss the idea of uh, like now it takes me you know twenty minutes to get to and from school um, uh, and like that's forty minutes that I could for instance be reading or sleeping mm -hmm. and so like both of those things um, uh, they add up they add up uh, I I miss the aspect of the Zoom commute for sure yes um, but then on the other hand I mean I made way better connections with people once we were in person. And I think that I'm starting to really realize one of the values of going to law school is having this network of other lawyers and, and high accomplishing people. Um, and so I think, you know, there's there's really no or there's, there's such a gulf in um, the difference of how much you're able to bond and connect with people in person sure. versus Zoom. So right. that's a, that's a huge advantage. That was the thing that um, I felt uh, similarly. That was like the biz biggest missing connection um, uh, for Zoom school was the idea that those conversations in the hallways and after class or before class um, uh, with your peers, with your professors, um, you just don't have the opportunity to do that when you're on Zoom school. Um, but when you're in person, you, of course, make those kind of connections. You can stop by office hours on a lark or you can meet someone in the, um, the cafe who's from your class and you're like, Oh, Hey, did you have trouble with that case today? Because I did too. Let's talk it out. Um, which you really don't have the opportunity for on zoom. So definitely a different world now that we're in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's far easier to do things on a lark when you're in person. Right. 
Right. Okay. Well, um, it's wonderful to uh, catch up with you. And now for the mystery, <laughs> the mystery email. Michael has no idea what he signed up for here. He just was like, "I'm in. <laughs> Let's do it." Ready to go. <laughs> so um, here's a list, a piece of listener email for you, Mr. Michael. Um, uh, hey guys, what are your two best pieces of advice for incoming law students? That's from Ooh. F. So big open-ended question there, um, and uh, I want to give you the first stab at it. What's your first impression, Mr. Michael? Okay, so I'm going to give you my absolute number one, the thing that I did the summer before law school that has helped me tremendously, um, and it's a thing that I didn't hear that much. It, it wasn't like a common piece of knowledge, um, is really practice and become a better typist. Um, oh getting okay. faster at typing. And so um, I, I'd like to think I'm a success story. The summer before law school, I could not touch type. I could not type without looking at the keys. Okay. All through college, typing all those papers You're, and everything. You were like I, a, a single digit pecker? I was a single digit pecker. <laughs> um, we should probably rename this, that, but yeah. <laughs> I was a <laughs> single digit, I was a, yeah. Um, single dig digit but, typist. <laughs> yes. Um, but so over summer, I, you know, just had some time and, you know, there's, there's, I found there's countless just free, you know, programs you could download or, or games and stuff you can play, but it is, it was so incredibly worth it to learn how to touch type. Um, because two reasons is, is one, if you're taking notes in class, sometimes, you know, the professor is just going to talk and talk and talk and they're not going to take the time for you to really have everything down. So it's easy to kind of get things down quickly. But on exams, I think it's a huge advantage, specifically when you're taking a timed exam without a word limit. Um, to be able some, to type faster. Like, yes. The difference between 40 words per minute and 80 words per minute is a huge fucking difference. Is huge. And professors, you know, obviously this, this varies depending on professors, but from my experience, they're not grading your exam as a, is this a cohesive piece of writing? often they have a checklist of all the issues, all the things they want to see. And if you, they're just looking, did they put it in there? The faster you can type, the more you're going to get it in there. And in my experience on law school exams, um, there's, there's never enough time, right? Never. If you had more time, there's always more things you could put in. The yeah. faster you can type, the faster you can put in. And I wouldn't be surprised if there is some sort of correlation between how quickly people can type and the grades again on exams. And I think that you will never... And obviously, that's not like the most important thing. It's probably the right. You need to have like thing. cogent thought and understand the issue in the first place. You have to be, but you're you're totally right. Like it, you can understand the issue to the cow, till the cows come home. But if you can't get it down on the paper, the professor doesn't know that. And if you run out of time because you're typing away one finger one <laughs> at a time. Mm -hmm. Like you're, there's no way. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. I haven't exactly. heard that one before. So, yeah. So that's kind of an under the radar thing that people don't talk about as much. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that's so my, that's my big thing. That's your big thing. That's your big tip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, I like, I like that. Um, uh, uh, the tip that I'm going to give is, uh, first off, think real long and hard about whether you want to go to school. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a, a really good conversation to have with yourself. Um, in the idea that not everybody knows what law school is and doesn't know what lawyers do. And so my, my big piece of advice um, that's like, like a little bit of not a piece of advice is to really analyze about whether you want to go to law school in the first place and you know what you're getting yourself into. That being said, if you are for sure like, hey, I'm going, I'm going to do the things. Um, my piece of advice is a book and my book is... Uh, I've recommended this on the podcast um, uh, through Nathan and Ben, but I'm here with it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Getting a running start. Um, uh, it's a book by uh, Gray Gifford Graber and some other people. Those are all actually University of uh, Maryland law professors. And they wrote this sort of like doctrinal companion for all of the 1L um, uh, doctrinal stuff. And there's some things in there. There's some chapters of like how to prep for law school, how to brief a case, how to do X, Y, and Z. 
I didn't know any of that shit when I started. Um, I was like, what's a holding? I don't know. Because mm-hmm. no, there's no like instruction manual, like law school 101 um, uh, for most places. Uh, they might include some of that stuff in your your like orientation. But for the most part, they're just like, hey, welcome to law school. Here's where things are. Congratulations. Go to class. Um, uh, I found this book incredibly useful. And uh, because what it does is it breaks down all the sort of doctrinal areas into about 70 or 80 pages a piece. Um, so 70 or 80 pages on criminal law, torts, etc. So each of the major like cases or concepts that every law school is going to talk about, every law school is going to talk about Marbury v. Madison in con law. If they didn't, your con law professor should be fired. But like they're going to talk about that. And so this has like two or three pages on just that case and its significance. And so it's like this primer or accessory that can help you before the semester, during the semester, and when you're studying for exams, if you use it um, in any of those manners. So that's my big piece um, uh, of advice for incoming law students. Interesting. That's I think that's good advice. So I read the book that I would really recommend is... Um, one L of a ride. One L of a ride. Okay. One L of a ride. Um, it seems like it's similar to that. It doesn't, I don't think it goes into like what any of the, like what torts is, what criminal is, anything, but it goes a lot into, <clears throat> it just tells you what successful students tend to do when they're in law school. Amazing. And it gets you in that mind frame. And it has some really good pieces of advice. Like the one that I really remember from it is just, like, do not fall behind. Don't fall behind in reading. Oh don't fall behind in class. It is, I, you know, I don't want to it's say it's impossible wave. to catch up, but, yeah. and, and it, again, it's like, it's, I think that one of the things I didn't expect is, and, and almost everyone I spoke to felt this way, is all of 1L, it really, really feels like you're just treading water. Just yes. like with doing the readings and everything, it feels like you're just keeping your head above water. I would say, do not at all expect to feel at any point like you're comfortable. Like, oh, yeah, I've done all my readings. I got this, yeah. I'm a week ahead. <laughs> Never. Yes, I don't know anybody who felt that way at all. I think if you're yeah. doing it right, you're going to feel like you're just just making it. I'm just finishing the readings. I'm just kind of staying on top of this and yeah. on to the next thing. And um, if you, you know, if you let two or three assignments go by and you don't get back, I mean, if you fall behind, it is, it is so difficult to get back. So... I think really getting yourself in the mindset of like being a hundred percent with everything. I'm not going to let anything fall by the wayside. Um, I'm going to stay on top of it. I think that mindset is huge. Yeah. Um, my, uh, second piece, that's, that's awesome. Uh, that's a great recommendation. So we got two book recommendations so far. (laughs) Um, uh, learning to type faster, uh, is certainly, uh, in a useful auxiliary skill as well. Um, uh, not only in law school, but I imagine in your entire legal career, um, you're just going to be able to get more work done. Let's be real. Um, uh, My second piece of advice is going to be that once you're in law school, and this was advice that I actually got a couple of places before I started. And so I feel like this is an appropriate piece to give here as well. Once you're in law school and you're in to the semesters, you have the full right and you should have the expectation to ask your professors what their exams are like, mm-hmm. um, uh, the style that they prefer, like whether they want IRAC or CREAC, and if you don't know what those mean, you will <laughs> soon. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, CREACs, all the different ways to write um, uh, these responses. Um, how uh, they expect you to respond, but also what their exams are like. And in that, should be an answer that there are past exams that you can practice on during your reading week. Um, And so like you spend this entire semester sort of like listening to class, making an outline, whatever the fuck that is. Um, And then during the week before exams, you should be taking practice, uh, practice runs at it, just like you took practice runs for the LSAT. Like you sat down and did a whole bunch of practice LSATs so that you could get a better score. That's the same thing here. You should t- expect to take practice exams in all of your classes um, throughout your entire law school. And that was one of the things that really helped me succeed on my exams. Um, you just knew what to expect. Yes. I think it's, yeah, I think you, I mean, you have an obligation as a student, I think, to try to extract as much information from your professor about what they want. Um, yeah. I feel like, uh, from what I have found, professors have 
um, hugely differing expectations of how they want their oh, answers yes. written. Um, even how they want, whether or not they want you to cite cases, if they yeah. want you to cite cases, how they want them to be cited. Yeah. Um, Pray it's not blue booking during an exam because, oh my God, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> I have had, um, I've had professors who really just want the classic like issue spotter, just, you know, from like an academic perspective, tell me all the issues and how they could resolve. I've had another professor who wanted you to come from a really practical standpoint. They almost yeah, wanted what's you to be the like best an advocate. Thing? And, and like, I think the ultimate thing that you could say on their exam is, is telling your client how to avoid litigation totally, even oh, though it wow. was like a, even though it was like a property question that had kind of two different answers. The, the ideal answer was how can we just avoid this litigation? Like he wanted very practical real world lawyering, which is, you know, which would have gotten you a terrible grade on like my con law. Test. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and then while we're on the subject of testing and while we're on the subject of recommending books, okay. the third book is, I don't know if you've read this is uh, getting to maybe. Yeah. And that was recommended. It should be required by, reading for everybody. I agree. And that, I think it was Nathan that originally uh, put that book on my radar. I would recommend don't read that book before you start law school, read it during law school as much as I hate to tell other people to read other things Additional in stuff. school than they're <laughs> yeah. reading. I think, it's a, I think it would have gone over my head before starting, but right. I read it um, maybe a month or so before kind of the studying for finals started. And I think it really puts you in the mind frame of how to uh, write a legal exam as right. opposed to like a college undergrad exam. Right, right. Because... Um, what a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that these exams are very gray areas because otherwise, like if you, if it's just like, okay, here's, here's the problem. And you're like, oh, that person is guilty of murder. Like, like they, it, like it's a cut and dry case. That's not interesting for the professor. Mm -hmm. And that's not an area where they can make you go down the different rabbit holes. And so the fact patterns and exam questions that um, you tend to get are very gray where it's not about a right or wrong answer necessarily the professor might think it falls more on one side and you could get the best grade in the class by going the opposite direction by making the best argument and so it's really about that um, dichotomy of uh, how did you explain that you understand the doctrinal material and support your ultimate outcome the ultimate outcome almost being irrelevant to how you score. Yeah. I mean, I think that, and, and people just need to, I think this advice is out there, but going into law school, you just need to get out of your head the idea that there's right and wrong answers to any of these questions. Right. Um, and specifically on exams, professors are going to give you fact patterns on legal issues that are specifically not settled in the real world. You know, right. things that if it were to come before the court today, there wouldn't be an answer because courts haven't decided this question. Like that's what professors are going to give you. So don't go into exams thinking I need to determine what the right answer is. Go into exams being like, well, okay, what are the two ways this case could go? Talk about both of those two ways. Talk about why it could go those two ways. And then talk about why you think it should go this way is kind of, I think generally the, the, prototype of like a law school exam answer yeah i had a professor who specifically was like okay you spot the issue tell me what the rule is um and then on your analysis section i need you to say this is what this person would argue on side a and side b would argue this alternative or contrary position and then based on the factual uh the factual analysis that's provided in the fact pattern you need to tell me which you think is the stronger argument. That last part, though, is worth one point. The entire rest of it is worth nine. And mm -hmm. so, like, he really wanted to see that back and forth discussion almost as if you were writing it as a future jurist on the court, which I thought was an interesting sort of um, perspective for the exam. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I think we got some great recommendations here. We definitely have two more than two best pieces of advice. But just to sum mm -hmm. them up, we got... Uh, become a better typist because it's going to be practically useful just in your life. You're going to be a professional writer. Yes, let's do that. Um, uh, then we got a book recommendation from me, Getting a Running Start, um, uh, which is uh, by Gray Gifford and Gray Graber. 
good doctrinal thing. Um, uh, then you had a, a recommendation of one L of a ride, right? Awesome. Mm -hmm. One L of a ride. And yeah. then, um, uh, a another recommendation of getting to maybe which has been recommended on the podcast a couple of times so definitely check that out as well and then last but not least talk to your professors about exams um, ask them what they're looking for be specific and ask them to be specific and then ask them for practice exams um, my school even has those like on file in the library um, so like you can get them they're just like in an exam bank. You don't even have to talk to them if you don't want to. But there's um, some of them, of course, you have to. And so um, uh, go out of your way to prep yourself for the future of those exams by doing practice tests, just like you would for the LSAT. Um, you got any sort of uh, uh, wrapping up points you want to make, Michael? Yeah, no, I agree with all those. The last thing I would say, and maybe the most important thing you can do before you start law school, is just kind of chill. Yes! Once you start law school, this oh, is the, it's a train, this man. Is the Get start on it. <laughs> of, of decades of no breaks. <laughs> yes. The thing that, I mean, I was fortunate in that I was kind of in lockdown. Um, I was actually still getting paid by my previous employer. And I was, I was with uh, my wife's family. So it was a very kind of chill area. But the thing that I did more than anything else the summer before law school was play uh, Call of Duty Warzone. <laughs> and I think that, that helped me tremendously. As much as you, I, I know people have obligations, but as much as you can relax and yeah. just not work and turn your brain off, um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to really be a rough going in. Yeah, I I can't agree with that more. Um, it's 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 going to be a hell of a workload, and it's nonstop, and it's seven days a week, and like the work life balance struggle is very real in law school. So the more that you can do to set yourself up for good habits of being like, hey, I'm gonna go to the gym or go outside or whatever. I'm gonna read a book on my own that I enjoy and try to get into that habit. The more likely you're gonna be able to do to keep that through law school as well. Though I'm sure some of that stuff will fall to the wayside as you get overwhelmed. As Michael said, it is a lot of barely keeping your head above water treading. Um, uh, so do the best you can by setting yourself up for success. Don't read all of your cases in the summer mm -hmm. beforehand. Like if you do that, I, you're not going to take anything in. Um, I've, I've seen that advice and I just want to debunk it right here. Read the assignments during the semester like a week ahead of time so that you can keep it in your brain during the actual thing during the summer before do nothing. If you can, mm -hmm. I want to hardcore agree with that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, uh, F I want to just say, uh, thanks so much for writing in. You gave us a great open-ended question there. Um, I hope this advice was uh, useful, um, uh, for you and for others. Um, if you'd like to be on the show, send an email to help at lsatdemon.com. We'd love to hear your LSAT or law school admissions questions. Thank you so much for listening, and don't pay for law school. 